So, um, so I will call um, this meeting, the January meeting of the West Concord Advisory Committee to order at 7.02 in the evening. Um, and John, you are able to do meeting minutes. Yep. Thank it. you so much. Thank you, thank you. All right. Um, the first item on our agenda is approval of our Dece our December meeting minutes and Amy pinch hit for us. Thank you, Amy. Um, would you by chance have those available to pull up? I have them and if I can screen share, I'll do it. That sounds great. Thank you. Um, Hello, Susan. Hi. Yes, yes, boy. That working? All right. Are you able to see it? Yep. Thanks, Amy. Okay. No problem. Um, any comments, questions? Can I scroll to the next page? Yep. Yeah. Next. Yeah. I got to have to do and I need to do it. Where did you get the banana? Okay, you can't just do that. You have to ask. Get out of there. Scroll. Scroll. All right. Um, I have no edits. Does anyone have edits? Does that look right? Thank you for the detailed notes, Amy. No problem. They're they're significantly shorter than the first time I took them. So I'm trending in a in a more concise <laughs> direction. <laughs> they're great. They are great. Thanks. Are they good to go then without any Hearing changes? No Can you scroll to the top of the second page? Absolutely. This one? Yeah. <laughs> There's a discussion about crosswalks. Is that where the, yeah, okay. I worried about the experiment leading to permanent paint. Um, misleading comparison. Yeah. I just thought like I, what was it? You had a you had a nice comment. I think it was the effect of why is it that we have to use experiments to prove that we need better crosswalks? Isn't it obvious that we need better crosswalks? Is that I don't know yeah. if that's a correct paraphrase. I was like sort of rebutting like the something like and I'm not part? sure, you know, kind of like fully. Yeah, is that is that what it was? Is that what it was, Amy? That I said. I remember um, you saying that you didn't want it to lead to worse crosswalks and also that you thought we shouldn't have to um, like demonstrate to anyone that it should be obvious that we should approach it from a position of um, we're entitled to this or these are better and we all agree rather than trying to make it seem yeah. like we need to prove that. Um, yeah, that was definitely a, a sentiment problem. that I had for sure. Yeah. <laughs> If we if we added after better crosswalks like a dash and said something like that should be a given, does that capture the sentiment? Or no? I think it's fine the way it is. I just yeah, I think it's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Any other? 
Hearing no additional requests for comments, do we have um do we have a motion to approve the minutes? A motion to approve. Thanks, Susan. I, I can you. second. Or John can second. And then I think we have to do it as a roll call since we are zooming. Um, so I'm just gonna do an order of the faces I see. Um, John, do you approve our December minutes? I think you have to say yes. Yes, I had it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I also vote to approve our December minutes. Um, Ann Sussman, um, do yes. you vote to approve yes. them? Yes. yes, I approve. Thank you. Jeff Welton. You're muted. I'm sorry, Jeff. I vote to approve the part that I attended, um, but I think we have quorum without me on this one anyway. So, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, Amy Robinson. Yes. How do you I vote? Approve. Thank you. And Susan. I approve. Yes. Excellent. So we have unanimously approved our December meeting minutes. Thank you again, Amy. Do you need me? Us. Do you need me to send them anywhere, or or they're yeah. good to go out there? If you could, um, if you could forward them to um, Nancy Hauser at the town mm -hmm. and CC me, and if you need her email, I'm happy to um, send it your way. I have it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Um, second item on our agenda, we're already at number two, we're flying, is um, a discussion about committee roles and responsibilities for 2022. Um, we had a working list that we amended last time. Would it be helpful if I pull that up? Yeah? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, can everybody see this document? So what we had here was administrative responsibilities. We had other responsibilities. I'm not reading these out loud. I can if that's helpful, but I'm just showing them. And we have liaison roles. And I believe we highlighted those that we felt were particularly critical at this moment in time. I'll be happy to, I think I said this already, to reach out and be the liaison for the TAC. I'm happy to keep doing economic vitality. I didn't really get much action on that this year. It was like one of them was canceled and the other one was postponed or something. But I, I can keep doing that. Hopefully there'll be more more to go go see uh -huh. um, if, if someone else wants to do the west concord junction cultural district committee i'm happy to like roll off of that one and do a new one um i feel like it's the most aligned with what we work on because they are talking about like local hyper local issues and cultural concerns and stuff so if anyone what, else Susan, wants to take that, yeah. What time and what day, um, what's their meeting schedule? Their meeting schedule is Tuesdays at seven. Um, and it's usually the first Tuesday of the month. So like it's essentially the day before our meeting. I'd also be happy to do the trail committee. I, w I was doing that, but I don't mind giving it up. It often um, is something I have to listen to while I'm driving into Boston. It's not the most conducive to me, like paying attention <laughs> at that time. Or I could split split it with you, Amy, whatever you want. I also, they, it's fine to do it. I, I've also found um, it's not been often that they've had a super significant to us conversation lately. So if you're interested, I'm fine with you doing that. That sounds fine. Because <laughs> I think it's going to be more relevant too with the bridge opening yeah over two it's just going to be huge and so i think we need to coordinate with them as much as we can um last time we met we felt um west concord, concord junction cultural district committee and public works commission were the two um other biggest priorities um 
So I don't know if folks have thoughts on that. We could change our mind. Folks could change their mind about that. Um, we could do like a divide and conquer if it's the schedule, if you know, schedule is a concern. I think it's really important because we were going to meet with and you've already reached out and done some really important preliminary work with public works and and talk about that and also people are really confused when in you know um because I, I i work in um at bradford mill people are confused when the road's going to get torn up in front of comab in front of deborah's when that's happening mm -hmm. um and, and a lot of people in west Congress don't quite know what's going on there so i think um understanding of that and and just working with them i think we were planning to meet with them and discuss this <coughs> discuss yeah. all the input we got from the public. And I think they'd love to see all the input we got. I mean, we had so many people in that walk, right? So many people yeah. here. We had people in wheelchairs, bicyclists. We had all kinds of people, moms, dads. So I think we need to really liaison with public works more. So they know us, we know them. I think we'll all do a better job. Um, so I think you were planning to have a meeting, but now you're stepping down off the committee. So we need to figure out how we're doing that. Yeah, I think um, two two things. One would be in the near term, ideally, a sit down with um, the director of public works, Alan Cathcart, um, which would be a good you know opportunity to discuss how you know how we can liaise with the committee, how we can get um, things on their agenda, and then following you know following that group to um, understand where they're at and. Um, yeah, so we can, we can help them, and they can help us, and we can mm -hmm. help communicate and get. You know, it would be perfect. It's really good we do that. That was a really good idea. It was Marsha's idea. It's a really good idea. So, so like, I, I would be up for being the person for either of those, um, except that I'm not going to be able to attend those meetings at those times. So if, as Marsha said last time, to be a liaison, you don't necessarily have to go to the meetings. These are both really, like, pretty important groups for us. So I wouldn't want I just, I don't wanna agree to do it if someone right. else wants to do it and can attend. But if it's okay, if I just say like, reach out every time and stay in regular contact with someone with WCJCDC or Public Works um, without going, I definitely can't attend a 4 p.m. on Wednesday meeting um, yeah. at all. And that looks yeah. like that's when Public Works meets and two nights in a row for, um, yeah. two nights in a row in a week is tricky. Yeah. Um, so I don't mind doing one of them if it's okay with everyone, if it's more of a, like out of the meeting, um, correspondence and keeping in touch and staying in the loop. Mm -hmm. And if that's okay, I don't have a preference between the two. <clears throat> I'm happy to get the ball rolling with public works. Um, just cause we have some things we want to start discussing with them. I could probably go to a Wednesday meeting at four, like once in a while, or arrange a special sit down with the director, Alan Cathcart at another, you know, time. Um, so I, I'll sign up for that and say that I'll at least get us started with that and see, um, you know, what other committee input is needed along the way there. And I'm helping, I'm happy to accompany you if you ever meet with Cathcart. Okay. Um, because I think the more we know, he knows about, you know, because I am working, I work right there. Yeah. And I'm in touch with a lot of people at Bradford Mill. And I think the more he knows about how that community is feeling, where they're having trouble driving, you know, it just, it just would be good. Be happy yeah. to. And then also show him what we put together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then if, if it's okay, I'll do WCJCDC if, if it's okay, if I communicate. I met Kate at the um, site visit I did a little while ago and stuff I sort of have communicated with her so if that's okay if I'm not always there then um or I might be able to go late just after like the kids are in bed I can attend a meeting then it doesn't matter but um you can put me down for that great <laughs> that's awesome thank you Amy um I'm realizing Jeff 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 how are you feeling about things I know you also had interest in economic vitality you toss that back and forth. We could flip coins. Well, the only, I, I, I'm willing to do anything, but I'm only here for three months. Right. Right. That's why I'm reluctant. I was going to suggest, I was started to suggest before, I'm happy to pinch hit on anything for the next three months and, you know, 
default to me um, to do different things, but I, I, you know, I don't know if it makes sense for me to start developing relationships yeah. and then jump right off, especially if it's something we feel is really, you know, a, a important committee to solidify relationships with. But if we we're going to have new members, I could pinch it on the important committees. Um, I, I, I'm happy to do that as well. That's a great offer. Yeah. That's a great offer. So, uh, so folks are seeing, you know, seeing agendas come through and feeling like there's something that's pretty critical to West Concord, but you can't make it. Um, maybe shoot Jeff an email, yep. and he can pinch hit through April. Does this feel? Oh, also, you can put me down for DEI because that was my idea, and I'll let. I I don't know when they meet or if I would need to go, but I'll at least introduce myself to them. Excellent. That's great. This is DEI. Diversity, equity, and inclusion. Oh, okay. <clears throat> if I think it's like a brand new, it seems I think they just started. They just formed, I believe. <clears throat> but I think it's uh, there's a member who's in another parent of a child in my daughter's class who I sort of have had contact with. So that's great. <laughs> You can put me down for Bruce Freeman Rail Trail for the meantime. I'm on that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought that was mine. I said trails. Is that the same as BPRT? There's also, there's also a trails committee. Um, okay, whatever. Doesn't matter. Well, and, and like uh, you're for transportation advisory and it looks like trails as well. So those, <laughs> like, would you be able to manage Jeff, those? Stay on BP, BFRT. We can collaborate, Jeff. That's totally fine. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if they're even going to, I don't know, they have monthly meetings. They skipped a couple of months, so I, I don't know. We also, we have um, Deb, Deborah Edelman is, um, is a liaison to us um, from, I think, the, the Bruce Truman Rail Trail. I think it's the advisory yes. group, yeah. um, and she is, here. is Hi, Deborah. Hi. I'm sorry. I saw your message just as I was logging on. I've had an adventure. Yeah, no worries. Day. I know you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we um, so um, so I mean, I, I think your perspective would be really helpful. Is it is it important that um, you know that that we attend your meetings as well, or have have you been volunteered as the glue between us? What's the best way? What's the best way to organize that stuff? Um, my first comment is more participation, the better. <laughs> so yeah, there's no reason not to. Um, right. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we have people from the public, you know, and they, it's just it's just so important. So I just don't want anybody to feel like burdened or something. But if somebody is interested, that would be fantastic. That sounds when, great. What are your meetings? Um, it, so it's just like you were saying the other one. It's the gen <laughs> generally the first Thursday at seven. So whoever has like the Tuesday and then you guys are the Wednesday <laughs> and the Thursday. So I don't know whose so bright tomorrow? idea that was, but yeah. It's tomorrow night? Yeah, I, I think Marsha wants to say something. Yeah. Yes, uh, I just, it, yes, the Bruce Freeman Ra uh, Rail Trail Advisory Committee, Committee meets tomorrow night. One of the items on their agenda is for the next six months is to be looking at Junction Park. So I think it's really oh, okay. important that that somebody um, attend from the, the uh, West Concord Advisory Committee just to stay aware of, of what's being discussed and, and how it's moving forward. Um, also, the February 3rd, the next meeting in February of this committee is, uh, of the Bruce Freeman Committee is, um, has to be, uh, is going to be February 10th, not the 3rd, because the 3rd is a, uh, an election day. And, um, they were planning to meet at the Harvey Wheeler Community Center. That's a polling location. So they will not be meeting on the 3rd, but will be meeting on the 10th. So if you want to put that in your calendar. Um, and Jeff and Anne, I could send you a copy of my update notes um, cool. that I send out on a monthly basis to both of you, uh, awesome. to the committee, so that you can stay apprised if that's useful. That's that'd be, that'd be fantastic. That'd be fantastic. I can certainly attend the February meeting. I unfortunately cannot attend tomorrow night. Um, so I don't know, Anne, if you are-, are I think I can do there, it. Yeah, I can do it. That would be great. And I'll make sure I'm there on the, on the 10th. 
So what is it? A it seven? Be, yeah, it's, it's a seven. By, by a Zoom. Okay. And, and Amy and Marsha, tonight, I was just going to read what our charges um, regarding um, West Concord. I, I can wait or I can read that now. It, Marsha, it's, it's, I think I copied you on the email, so I think you've seen it. Um, and basically, it will show you what we're going to talk about tomorrow. I think, um, I think since we're here having this conversation, if you want to spend a moment to do that, maybe that can help us align. Okay, great. All right. All right. Um, <clears throat> Let's get over here. One second. <laughs> I and I know you had other commitments tonight too, so I don't want to. Oh, thank you, thank you. But you like I said, to. I this came first, so um, okay. So I'm gonna now. I'm just gonna read the charge. Uh, so the deliverables are a written recommendation to the select board on the conceptual redesign of Junction Park to ensure the safety and separation of users, which are wheeled recreation users, pedestrians and commuters. The second is a recommendation for a short-term proposal that augments signage and helps address increased ridership due to the completion of the Route 2 bridge later this year. Um, so those are the deliverables. The timing is that the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee must deliver a recommendation to the select board no later than June 30th, 2022. And um, I will say that in November, that seemed like just like so far in the future. And now all of a sudden you're like, okay. Um, so uh, we have put together uh, kind of just a rough sketch and tomorrow we're really going to be um, uh, continuing these discussions in earnest. Um, I can just again, just give you a kind of a, a highlight of that. Um, subject to the approval by the committee, what we're thinking about, um, number one, we're gonna finalize some design principles. Those have been distributed. We're we'll be posting those and get reaction. Uh, number two, we're gonna hold a big meeting uh, in, in a large space, perhaps the town hall, for example, um, in early February. And uh, again, that pushed back from January due to Omicron, I, I don't know if it's going to get pushed back again, um, during which we're going to solicit ideas, redesign ideas, short-term, long-term um, discussions. Um, then, based on that, we'll have a second meeting, again, February, March, based on the current environment, to continue the conversation, refine the ideas, uh, do some consolidation, uh, early spring, have another meeting. And what we would really like is for people to send in ideas and recommendations before this first meeting in February. And again, this will all be published and we're gonna post everything. Um, so really in conclusion, kind of like what Marcia said and, and, and I'll echo that again, we want all participation. Um, it's just so important. You guys are so involved, so invested and so familiar with the issues. Your participation is welcome, whether it's because you happen to be liaison, just because you're here tonight, um, you have an idea. Um, and then I'll close and say, you know, and, and if you have time now, Amy, um, for a brief discussion, you know, what are the three most important things that y'all are concerned about with the redesign and why I can take notes and bring those back. And, and I know Marsha's here, so we collectively can take those back. Um, what do you think, guys? Should we, can we take those now? Do, do, should we? We'll pause on them till the the next agenda item. We can move it up. What do you What do you think, committee? I think we could just respond right now. She's right here. We're all doing it right now. Yeah. We don't have a lot of time, and you're recovering. And <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Right. I'm a good note taker. <laughs> Any initial thoughts, guys? Well, it sounds like it's really well organized what they're doing and it's really, really important and there's going to be a hugely trafficked area. It already is right now and it's going to be used at all times of day and night. So it's really important they're doing it. It's good. Yeah. yeah. My, my question, I have more of a question. Has someone reached out to Ron at the club car? Is he, in, is he being talked to at all? Because I know they have like um, 
their their whole property abuts the current rail trail and they have very limited outdoor seating um and i would just be i and also they're lovely people um and so it's they might be good people to talk to just to make sure that they're heard about any concerns they have about um, plans for right around their little business there. I would just say as someone who like used to commute in the mornings and would kind of hang out in Junction Park sometimes because of that, it seems like there does need to be the ability for people to move quickly through there and move slowly through there. And sometimes maybe people moving on wheels through there, like if they're on, I don't know, a skateboard or a bike, if that's supposed to be prohibited, then we need to make that clear. But right now it seems like the people moving slowly and quickly are in danger of colliding with each other. And if there's a way to design things so that the slower people can be in one space and the faster people can be in another space, that would be ideal, I think. I, I like that too. Um, that was my thinking is obviously this, it's a, it's a different groups of people and types of users kind of all coming together really quickly in one small space. And I got to think that people have worked on these types of challenges before, but I like Susan, you, you, you articulated, I think very, very well. You want a place for people to be slow, to linger, to kind of relax and chat and whatnot. But I've been a commuter too. I got to get on the train and I got to do it now and I'm going to move fast. So I think it's a great idea. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough nut to crack. You know, I think, I think, you know, there's so much about that space that's so lovely and successful. I think the green thumb plantings are, you know, are delightful. It's like a well-placed little eddy where you see kids hanging out, little kids, bigger kids, older people. And I, you know, my understanding is that that was part of the vision for the park and it's great. And it's great, you know, that it is so tightly linked to the trail in a way, because it's a place that you, you know, you find um, that could work as a pasture space and as a lingering space, which I think is all is all good. It's just trying to figure out how to organize those uses so you know you're that's a safe and welcoming environment while all these things are happening. And it's you know it's interesting. You think of like Central Square, Davis Square, places that are two steps busier. You just can't move quickly through it, so they're self policing. And this is busy enough and well used enough that you know we worry about these things but it doesn't self, quite self police it's looking for a you know for a design solution this may i mean i may be dead wrong but one thing i think does work well about the design is that there seem to be like i like that there are eddy, eddies in a way like pockets where there is seating that sort of suggests this is where you should hang out um you know that's a little off the through way so maybe that's something that could be built on and i you know i know that um, you know, Dorian, perhaps others had concerns about painting on the pavers, but wow, I do really see those brightly painted big blue circles, I believe they're blue, that say get off your bike that are like on the ground. Those are, um, you know, I tend to not notice the signage as I'm walking through a space, but those I really do notice. Um, so if there's a way to, you know, integrate some of those, I'm sure everyone's already thinking about that. Um, you know, as you're approaching in either direction, that might help to signal to people all the more powerfully. I know they're close. And I know there was discussion about why they couldn't be on the pavers themselves, but maybe there's a way through that. I think you have to have to make the crosswalks more un understandable because right now there's still not that crosswalk on Main Street. And that's why people are going through Junction Park where they wouldn't have to go through Junction Park because often they want to stay on the same side of the street that um, laws that um, the 99 is on, but you make them, the crosswalks now make them go there. So you've in, in made the congestion there because of the crosswalk design. So you really need to look at it. And what I would also argue that you must do is some evidence-based design. Look at what, you know, really that are places that are really newly walkable are working, whether in Europe or here, look what they've done and then copy what works, right? So right now it's a pretty confusing crosswalk getting into Jun Junction Park. And people don't, a lot of people don't even take the two crosswalks that have been laid out. So you need to look at that. And I would also argue that any design you do, you should also test it afterwards to see if it's working. 
so that we, we because of what we could be doing, because what's so cool about Junction Park, it's for all ages and mobilities. The fact is, with the aging of the baby boom, we're going to need to apply that not just to Junction Park, but all over. <laughs> so if we can do it right and do it well, what you're learning here can really save Concord time and money and lives going forward. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, um, John or Amy, any additional comments? This has been great. This is wonderful. I don't know, Marcia, if you wanted to add anything or you think we, we got some good information. I think it was, it was good to hear um, and appreciate the comments that were made. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. any, any members of the public who are with us this evening? Any comments they have on Junction Park? Actually, I have, I thought of one. Um, yeah. I, when you are at Club Car Cafe in that area, as you get closer to Club Car Cafe, there's like, um, there's a section where you're still on the rail trail and there's like dumpsters there or you're close to dumpsters mm -hmm. and you can really notice, notice the dump, the smell from, from those dumpsters. Um, and I imagine, you know, I wonder if there's something that we could be, that, that could be better about that. John, that's a really great point. I noticed the exact same thing and it made me feel like, am I supposed to be here? Yeah. Really scary. Yeah. It's really yeah. creepy, and especially they, if you're a woman walking at night alone. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just, it's just really bizarre. Um, I biked by there just over the holiday with my son a couple of times and twice when we went by, not only were the dumpsters there, but the lids were open and they were open, tossed over, um, obstructing most of the path. So um, oh, yikes. And that was like on our way and on our way back, like say 45 minutes later. So um, they were not only gross, but also <laughs> um, not safe. <laughs> and when you say obstructing, I'm just imagining a dumpster. So it's open. So what was it obstructing? It, I'm just trying like, to- So like the, the, the large black lids were like kind of open and then like um, sort of like if you're on a bike, neck level, like kind of just- Oh, geez. Slats hanging across, yeah. obstructing maybe half to three quarters of the, um, cause, cause the back of the dumpster is against the fence. And then the, the bike path is on the other side of the fence. And so they were like flung open over <laughs> the fence, wow. but they didn't like close all the, they weren't open all the way down. That's um, really along the side. Uh, they were sticking wow. out. Um, and there were like three of them in a row. Um, and we were fine and it was the day we could see them, but it was, but, yeah. um, not great. Wow. That's great. Thank you. I really like the idea of finding out what's happening in other places. Um, all over the country, there's more and more of these open space initiatives. So I, I, I will, you know, I'm going to bring all of this back, but just personally, I just think that's just so important to, you know, something has been working to examine that. Well, let us know what you find. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, thanks for your, yeah. thanks for your time, everybody. Thank you for being here, thanks. and I think it's it'll be great to have um you know the the two way liaisoning moving forward. Yep. I think that'll help. Yep. We're all focused on the same stuff at the moment. Okay, great. Thanks. If it's okay, I'm probably going to sign off um, since this was the main activity. So <laughs> thanks, Deborah. Thank okay. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Thank you. Happy New Year. Okay. Good meeting you. Same. All right. So, um, so should I scroll back up to, on roles and responsibilities? Should we go back to the hard part? Um, so administrative, we have agenda related, drafting and circulating, submitting to the town for posting meeting reminders and quorum tracking, tracking rotation for meeting minutes, sending approved minutes to town, which folks could do individually too, um, tracking rotation for planning board meetings, if that's a goal moving forward. Um, this is duplicative. Um, outreach to prospective members, coordination with town during new member approval process managing website, managing social media presence, and then rotating meeting facilitator role was an idea that was suggested last time. Um, and then other, we had speaking with community members who reach out to WCAC about projects or concerns, um, homework related to design review, 
um, where relevant, drafting letters on behalf of the committee, a responsibility that circulated to different members, um, research communication, documentation of issues of interest to the committee, often related to letter writing, um, and community engagement was one that seemed like an area folks wanted to focus on more moving forward. Thoughts on, thoughts on this? The charge does say we are supposed to have a chair, but maybe one could get away with co-chairs. It doesn't define what the chair's responsibility is. So the committee could divide and conquer as it chose. Sorry. <laughs> what do you think? So what's the decision that we're making? Um. So the committee needs a chair moving forward and it needs, in theory, all, most of these things done. Um, so these are things that I have been doing. Um, and as this is my final meeting, We need to decide how to proceed. So I would like to do this, but the truth is I am, so I'm on another, I'm on two, three other committees, one of which wow. I'm chairing. I'm chairing one of them, but I'm not I'm terming out of that on, uh, in June. Um, so I don't think I could, I could do a good job now, but I may be able to do a good job after June on that. Because um, I'm not only terming out of the chair role, I'm also terming, terming off of the committee altogether. Um, That's something this committee has done in the past, has had like a six month chairship role and then passed the baton. I'm willing to do that for an interim. Uh, it would only be through April. Um, but... Uh, I, 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 if, if we wanted to do that and I could hand off to John, we just, I, I think technically we'd have to figure out how to handle um, May. I'm actually, my, my term either ends in April is, I think I'm out on the April meeting, so. I mean, my, my concern is just how, how the quality of the work, right? So if, but if it's just a month or two when I'm between, the two roles, it's not a huge problem, I don't think, as long as you can be lenient with me, I suppose. I could try to get you set up for it too. And yeah, John, I'd be willing to help as you are transitioning into June, like June, I, I could certainly help out with May or even like the transition period. I just, I have a big website project at work and it keeps me from trying to step up and do more here right now during like Q1 of this year. Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry, Jeff. Is I'll the chair Q1. typically a, a one year term? It, it varies. Sometimes it's a year, but again, like, um, you know, in, in my tenure, at least, it's been broken up into six months or, or smaller when people, you know, just felt they didn't necessarily have the capacity to do that, um, you know, to take it on. I would also say that, um, <clears throat> that also in the past, we had, um, we had a chair and a secretary who, you know, shared the response of some of the things in this column. So, well, some of the things across those two buckets, and that may ease the onus too. Yeah, having a secretary role helps a ton. Uh -huh. Somebody's always on top of, you know, all, basically all those things under admin helps a ton. Uh, 
uh, managing website, managing social media, managing, well, managing website and social media, we could call that like a, that could be its own role and commit or committee, even like subcommittee that like social media or communications role. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I've been kind of like not covering it very well in the past, but I can certainly double down on it, especially since we need new members and we also want to create more community engagement. I feel like there is certainly uh, a gap <laughs> and we need to fill it with communicating about what's going on in our committee and West Concord in general. Yeah, if we had more members on this, we could we could have subcommittees. Yeah. We're almost there if we had four more people or something, we could have say like three subcommittees. So, you know, two or three people each. But if we just have this role, I think that's that's helpful. Like a secretary role, a communication role, I think would help divvy it up. I don't know all the things that are involved in a secretary role, but I would be willing to I really don't mind taking meeting minutes and um, it like it seems like it's always a little bit of in my short time here it's often had to switch at the last minute or it's a thing like that doesn't yeah. seem like something that someone should have to set up a schedule for or whatever I don't mind taking them always and sending them always to the town um, and then I don't know what else would be part of a secretary but like it, as far as minutes go if that helps and if no one objects and if John accepts my um, assurance that I will try to accurately represent his comments in the future, um, then I, I wouldn't mind taking that on if it's just like eliminates one thing from this list. That would make a, that's a. Yeah, that would that make a, a huge difference. Yeah, that's an awesome offer. Um, and then I, if I had to miss a meeting for some reason, then it would just be like on a one-off finding someone to cover instead of um, always worrying about a rotation and stuff. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind submitting agendas for posting. I just don't know exactly what goes, like, I don't know what information you get or how you put them together. Um, so. I put um, meeting agendas together based on our discussions at the last meeting based on things that come to me in between. Sometimes it's the town will get in touch and say, hey, this needs to come before you for review. Here's the proposal. Um, and sometimes like in the Junction Park example, like Dory Kehoe got in touch with me um, on a topic that she, you know, she was concerned about and asked that, you know, we bring that up as a committee and that's happened but so these, these people reach out months. to you because you're identified as the chair. So it still yes. seems like a chair, like making it um, thing. Yeah. And then you, you know, you can also, when you circulate an agenda, you can have a standard agenda, which is like bare bones. And then, you, and then you add those things and then you circulate that. And then there can always be additional changes to the agenda once you've circulated it. So that's another way to get agenda content so if we if we make i don't mind do i don't mind doing that too if if then if it's just a like if we have a bare bones one and then it's for john like if people reach out to john or whoever is identified as the chair and then that person just sends to me add this then like i can do that it's just i didn't want it to be confusing about how like contact points for the kinds of things you just described amy i mean yeah or you know john and others. I mean, I don't want to overcomplicate that aspect of it, whatever right. would simplify it. I don't mind being right. the point person for posting things on the town's website if that is something that helps. Um, and if there's a non confusing way to make the agendas part of that, I'm up for that. Great. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Uh Meeting reminders, is that okay? So Under secretary role. So once you, you post the agenda, um, you send it to the town, they 
you send it to the town with a date or does the town give you a date? Well, we have, we are typically- It's, it's on a schedule, first, right? Yeah, first Wednesday yeah, so. at seven. So, um, so unless there's an, an issue with quorum, so usually here's what I do. Like when I get to the end of the month, I have a reminder on my calendar and it says ping everybody about agendas and they put together their draft agenda and I circulate it and I say, let me know if you can't make it. And so then I submit the agenda to the town um, and I change a date if I need to. And then I try to the weekend before or a couple of days before the meeting or the morning of <laughs> send out a reminder um, to folks to say, hey, just a reminder, a meeting, look at this, um, you know, whatever the hot issue is, here's our agenda, here's a reminder of the link, um, just to keep it on our radar. I guess I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned about all that being for me, um, yeah. because I'm not volunteering for the chair because of yeah. my own perception that I don't have the benefit <laughs> for it right now. Mm -hmm. so, so maybe, I, um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, I can share share the load on that, um, or the you know when I take over that role, I can share the load on that. And uh, and one thing that I've done in the past to help is you just if you have a schedule like that, you can automate. Like you said, you can automate Google Calendar invites. Uh, mm -hmm. You can adjust. You can add the attendees. You can put instructions in in the invite, um, and it just kind of makes it a little like easier to find what you're supposed to do and, and, uh, and so I can I can I can do some of that and I will do it and hold it together until you take over and do your masterful Google calendar stuff <laughs> yeah no it's not a requirement it's not a requirement it just kind of helps because you yeah, if you're only doing it once a month if you're like if you're only doing it once a month it's like you have to rewarm up your brain on, to figure out what to do Um, okay, so do I have this right? Meeting reminders, quorum tracking is going to be the chair. Yep. Is that right? And then taking minutes and sending minutes and sending to the town for posting will be the secretary. Um, drafting and circulating agendas and submitting those to the town for posting. Is that the secretary? I think it can be a chair if if I'm um here in Amy, uh, I think it appropriately. Thinking that actually, I think that should probably be the chair, because people are going to set, contact us anyway, John, because they're going to see our the name and you know ask, can I be on this? Can you do this? So, I think that makes sense. I um, can I could do the planning board meetings because that's just really setting up like a sign up genius or something, right? Yep. Um, and I would suggest that. Outreach to prospective members should probably be, well, I mean, totally your call. I would say to, to me, that strikes me as a chair responsibility because, um, but unless someone wants to be a new member liaison or coordinator, and that could be its own role. I, I'm happy to outreach to members. I think there are a lot of people in West Concord where I where I'm living with are really interested in these ideas that we're pursuing, but I'm having to collaborate with others too, or co, co do it. So <laughs> I suspect the, the request will come to the chair um, and we can turf, turf it off to you if you're, if you're willing and able, and sure. if you're not, the, uh, I, I can pick it up in the meantime, I'm sure John, it's not gonna be that many folks. I. I don't think it's probably once every other month or so, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, Amy, just going back to the planning board meetings, I don't remember, and I lost your email. Um, can you like send to me wherever we are? Like how far we the are sign out of are? our, okay. I think we passed the expiration of our doodle. I can okay. confirm okay. that. Um, and I was remiss in not getting it up. No problem. <clears throat> um, and then meeting facilitator, does the, do this, the, does the chair want to do that? Does the chair want that to rotate? Yeah, I think that is what the chair does primarily, right? You're talking about mediate, you know, mediating this meeting, right? That's, 
in my view, like one of the principal roles of the chair. So meeting, and that's going to stop saying rotating. Let me know if I'm if I'm getting. I am not at my best tonight, so if I'm getting things wrong, give me a shout. Um, wow, as far as, guys. As far as quorum tracking goes, I mean, the only thing really to do there, right, is note the quorum at the beginning of the meeting. You don't have it rescheduled. Yep. I think that's part of um, the reminders. This is part of the, I see. The, as I saw it, I mean, yeah. you don't have to do this moving forward, but just a reminder to the members, our meeting is coming up. Let me know if you can't make it so, they, so that ideally, you know, before the meeting, if you need to reschedule. I, I think, you know, if we can ask everybody to just you know, as, as soon as you know that there's going to be a conflict, send the note to the chair. I think it's mm -hmm. pretty straightforward. Yeah. Then. Does that, do we want this to come off the list? Does that need to be in there? Uh, I think it needs to be there. Yeah. Okay. I was just clarifying what it, what it means. <coughs> okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so I think this is chair, right? I think that just happens because they see that you are chair and they show up at your door. Right. Not literally. In good way. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> um, and I, I would say I, I get one of those like every two or three months. That's not onerous. At your house? No, <laughs> metaphorical show up at my door, show up at my email box. <laughs> um, and then what do you, Um, I don't know. I mean, this maybe bigger chunks have laid, rested with the chair, but maybe the rest of these are all shared responsibilities. I don't know how you guys see that. <laughs> I, think we should, I think we should do shared responsibilities, particularly since we're having kind of a, um, a, a little bit of a floating chair issue. Uh -huh. And so I think that's fine. Are you okay, Amy? Yeah. Yeah, okay. you, you sound like <laughs> yeah. um, you know one of the things in looking at Concord, this is just a little bit off the off the off off the side here. One of the things Concord doesn't have a design review board. Almost all towns in Middlesex County, you know, that are dealing with the kind of new development like we are, always have design review boards, and it's something that maybe Concord wants to look should look at. A design review board will have local registered architects, engineers, you know, planners on it who really are familiar with current practices, who can review their drawings that we do, that, we, that are done, and then they can give their insights. Nothing's, man, nothing's mandatory that they say, but it, 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 Acton uh, founded, had a design, founded a design review board committee like, well, I don't know, 10 years ago, I helped them do it, and it's just made a huge difference in the town. You know, it's, it's free experts to look at everything the town's doing, basically might be something that Concord should look at. So you're saying, Anne, if Concord were to adopt something like that, there would be, I guess, less responsibility on us to really like learn the ins and outs of some of the proposals that are presented to us. Like we would be able to have well, they're not access less to someone. But the design review board is really useful. Like Wellesley has a design review board. Con uh, Acton has a design review board. Um, Hudson has a design review. They all have design review boards because what that does is there are people who can really look at the plan <coughs> and tell you when they're going to work, when they're not going to work. Um, you know, and, and they can just give you professional insights. And there are people who really know the community and are licensed residents who happen to live there giving their expertise for free. Um, so it's really can be really useful and Concord is outstanding in not having a design review board. That's what I'm seeing. If you look it up online, you can Google it and you'll see all these towns have design review boards. You really cannot do good development without it because otherwise you have planning boards where no one's a licensed architect. 
So, so it does seem low, like if we had access to that kind of expertise, then we would spin our wheels maybe a little bit less with these like thorny developments that come in front of us where, you know, there's disagreement over the styling of a building or something like that. We would be able to consult an expert and maybe shortcut some of the more lengthy, um, I guess, back and forth that we've had to engage in in the past. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think, again, it's something like, just like I said earlier, when um, we were talking with the person from the BFRT, that you want to see what other towns are doing. Other towns are all having design reports. And there's a reason for it. Are they perfect? No. Does, is, does everything get developed? Of course not. There's always going to be issues. But, but it is an opportunity, and nothing's binding that the DRB does, but that it's an opportunity to have access to consultants who are experts and um, really care about the community, know where things don't work. And so yeah. comp not having it, you can see that's what's getting built here is kind of random unless it's in a, it's in a historic district. I think, yeah, I mean, it's an inter interesting thing that the you know committee could think about, town could think about moving forward. I mean, I think currently in recent years, there has been, you know, pretty good representation of architects on the, the planning board. Maybe it's a question about the composition of the planning board too. I don't know. Um, one thing I, I have liked about WCAC as a forum, I, like there's something nice about having this as a place where, you know, we're not, we're advisory, of course, in our comments, but something nice as a forum that this is, you know, people, when there's a new development, when there's something coming in that, you know, sometimes, sometimes this is a place where, you know, I've seen 60, 70 people from the community come to think together, hear about a project, think together about its impacts from a design perspective, but also from a community impact perspective in a holistic fashion. And that maybe there's something good about that too. I don't know. One can. Yeah, well, it's just another way to do it. And just is we're becoming like the odd man out. <coughs> There's a reason they all have it. Um, how do we, just to, to shift us back to our lists here, um, how do we feel about, how do you guys feel about this? Their April meeting picks up after with help from Susan. Chair's doing agendas I think, I think it looks great and I think you I think Amy and all these people reaching out I think it looks great and Susan this is super guys and I think we're going to get more people interested this is great thank you everybody you are all rock stars um so I will um I will circulate this after our meeting and we will all have a record do you want me to incorporate that document like by reference into the minutes? I kind of, I kind of already did, but is sure. it going to be, yeah, do you want to like attach it to the end of the minutes or as an exhibit or something like that? That's a good idea. Okay. Send to up. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> so <coughs> third item was um, an update <clears throat> and um, circle back on next steps for um, the bike and ped um, improvements for the junction. Um, I had made some, um, some modest efforts to update a presentation um, and then got COVIDed um, and passed the baton <laughs> to Susan and Ann who very sweetly picked it up um, and have been working on that. Um, as I recall where we left last time, um, our key next steps were um, a touching base with public works who thought it would be valuable to meet with um, a representative or two from the committee early on. To, um, to hear what, um, you know, folks have been thinking. That strikes me as very helpful, just in here, you know, understanding how public works thinks about these things, what's hard, what's easy, what's already on their list to, to get done. Um, another step, perhaps quickly following that would be, um, you know, a visit to the transportation, newly formed transportation advisory committee, um, participants of whom joined us on that walk in the fall. Um, and there was also a bunch of discussion about, you know, are there ways um, to broaden the conversation and hear more input from folks about, um, about um, you know, other bike, sorry, I'm getting some visitors in the background mm -hmm. about um, by other um, bike and pedestrian concerns beyond those who joined us in the walkabout.
Good. One, next I don't step. know if that um if that matches your recollection, guys. Um, and how? <laughs> <laughs> it's a member of the public with something to say. Yeah. <laughs> he's so beautiful, Amy. He's so beautiful. He's the best <laughs> He's a cutie. Okay, I'm sorry. He's gonna say hi. He really wants to say hi. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Hi. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the public and the rabble rousing, man. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure we gave enough consideration to him as chair. Is he? Yeah. Up there you go. He can be chair. Let's have him in the meeting. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, sorry about that. So, um, yeah. So, thoughts on those as um, as next steps um, discussion. What the, thoughts on this? Well, I think we need to. I, 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 I basically, I think we just it, we can maybe just make a few little redactions to it, but we shouldn't overthink it. A lot of people participated and we don't want them to be brainwashed out, you know, and we can put a lot in the, some is in the appendix, but the basic ideas are just that the continually safe walking, crosswalks, sidewalks, bike, it isn't there. It's very disjointed. And we need to have it a continual system of crosswalks, a continual system of sidewalks, a continual system of speed safety. We need to make it safe for everybody, not just cars. And, and, and we need to really work on that fast. <laughs> yeah. So I was able to take the, the, um, the presentation that um, Amy Kaiser and Anne worked on to get it, they got it started. And then I took it and tried to organize a little bit more during this week. And I think I've got it down to a manageable amount of slides. We have loads of pictures. Everything is kind of chunked up into you know, like four main sections, you know, crosswalks, sidewalks, bike accommodations, and signage. And I feel like with what we have now, you know, taking out the, the comments and notes to self that are on these slides, I think we could go to um, Alan Cathcart, the director, and just say, here's a, a bit of an example of what we've gathered. Um, you know, is there a time? Should we be making a, a meeting with your whole entire team? Should we just talk through this together? What are the ways that we can collaborate with you to um, hopefully utilize some of the budget to make West Concord a little bit more hospitable for pedestrians? I totally support you. I think we, we thought enough about it. Let's just get it out there. And I think it's really useful for his job to see all this. This is yeah. public input showing that what he's doing is what we need. I mean, yeah, it, it's really perfect. He needs to know, he has, needs to have access to it, I think, um, you know, and so it's great. And, and, and we can actually keep doing more of it too. So I think we should, we've thought enough about it, we should make the date. Bigger. And because I think he was really interested in meeting with you, Amy, right? Uh, and um, mm -hmm. before the holidays. So we should yep. just set the date and I'd be happy to collaborate with you on it, Susan. Um, or whatever you want and and let's just get it to happen because i think that that was the amazing thing about that walkthrough there was just so much energy there <laughs> you know people are really excited about it they want it better you know for their kids for people in wheelchairs for all kinds of people and we want to run with that energy we don't want to hold it here we want to keep it going <laughs> right yeah so, so i think we need to give it to them and say look this is what's happening it's really building you know what can we do? And I think this idea, though, of consistent walkability, consistent safe bikeability, consistent sidewalks, consistent cry crosswalks, we don't have that now. We do not. And that's yeah. huge. So people don't even think of walking because of that. And that hurts us all. It's one of the reasons not to go off here. As you know, we have 30 to 40 percent more carbon footprint per capita in the United States than in all countries in Europe, in part because of driving. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do think that um, the work that's supposed to be done for complete streets, which is, I guess, partially funded by that, um, by like Brookside Square slash 13B, that work, I believe, is supposed to take place in the spring and summer of 2022. So coming up, like, let's say in the next six to eight months. And that yeah. kind of 
puts like some core improvements in place where then we can radiate from that and make other improvements that connect those great improvements with everything else and, and get that consistency that you're talking about. So I feel like Public Works hopefully sees those complete streets improvements as like an important stepping stone to more. Right, and I think what we need to know though, I think there's been public questions of when will the new crosswalks happen and which one are happenings in the complete streets thing that's happening in 22 and which one aren't. And because yes. some people are even thinking that, you know, around where you live, Amy, it's really dangerous there on Lawsbrook there. And I'm not sure that's part. So we need to really, no, like, what we need is this committee needs to do our public service. We need a map which shows when the crosswalks are happening and which are in this grant and which would be for a grant for 2023, you know? So we've, we've and to Public Works credit, um, you know, they came to us and we got multiple bites of review uh, yeah. as that was taking place. And, you know, with full acknowledgement, budgets were limited, things, you know, it's a, it's just the stretch, um, you know, be, from Church Street, um, you know, to not quite Lawsbrook Road. Um, and so, um, so I think, you know, they, with help from Marsha, you know, Marsha did a, an amazing job, like keeping us in the loop when things were happening in between our meetings, letting us know when the former iteration of the Transportation Advisory Committee was seeing the next iteration. So we had an opportunity to revisit that, um, you know, exactly when the work is scheduled. I, you know, I don't know. It's been a couple months. It, you know, we wait in at the conceptual design period. So that would be a good thing to get an update from, from, yeah, Alan. Exactly. but I, I think, I think that that message Susan is, is exactly right. And I, you know, and in that category, I lump like, you know, the improvements on the Bruce Freeman trail and, you know, and junction Lake junction park, like we in West Concord have been the recipient of all kinds of great um, you know, complete streets improvements. And, you know, in a way, like maybe the, the opposite of the silver lining of that is that that makes the gaps show through a little more. And now that people right. are biking and walking around, you know, it um, with with more intensity, um, you know, it makes it a right moment to, um, you know, to figure out what what's next and what's doable in the near term. Well, so it'll take a little longer and could should get queued up now. Well, I think the next step then would be would be to reach out. Would you read it, reach out, Susan or John? Would you reach out to do? How would we do it to to set up a potential date? Because he seemed, um, Alan seemed really interested in meeting. So, do you want to? Yeah. Who wants I'm to I'm happy to reach out and introduce myself and um, get the ball rolling with maybe getting a, a meeting date on the calendar, and we can just take it from there. I think that's a great idea and that that's a great agenda because I mean, because because there is so much energy here we don't want to keep it hung up in our community community we want to get it out and i think he's in yeah. very interested in it and, yeah. and it makes his job easier yeah so, so, so susan uh, i'll i'll forward you that message so you have the the last piece of the conversation to jump to jump into okay perfect okay we said we needed to get our ducks in a row make sure we we're all on the same page and then we would be back in touch yeah okay that makes sense I think this is great, guys. And Susan, can you sort of, can you just like sort of loop everybody here in on the meeting or how do you want to do that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, gosh, um, it seems like maybe more than just me should go. I'm not sure, you know, I'd how you all to want you. to arrange that. Okay. I'd, I'd be I happy with you. Um, so yeah, we should, we should go and I'll, take notes slash, you know, get our next steps, I would say. And then we can talk about it in, um, actually I can email everyone, like, you know, just email out the, the team to let everyone know what transpired and if there are any things that we need to do before our next, you know, monthly meeting. Um, would that be an okay approach? I think that'd be great. And I think also action items for the talk would be really clear things we wanna know from him. We wanna not only show him that, about the amazing input we got from all the people from the walk and everything. But what we also want to do is get, find out a way we can get a continual calendar going that's easy for him and us to know. So we know when is the crosswalk coming? When is it, you know, so because people are confused, like they're saying, so when is this happening? And, you know, and, and we want to be able to tell them, don't worry, it's not going to be happening till, till January, till June, you know? Yeah. They, no, we want to know and where and which one, and they're also interested in which specifically. There's a little confusion about it. Um, I believe this information may be out of date. The construction was anticipated. 
<laughs> sorry, um, the construction was anticipated um, this summer. I know like things in my world, everything going out to bed is coming back real wacky and it's, uh, you know, changing timelines. Um, but but I believe that was the the goal. The last time we saw the project was construction well, so in the summer true. and do it. Yeah. And do it in a couple. Yeah. So, to begin construction in summer, I believe. <coughs> this coming summer, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I should say it may have even been spring, but this construction season. Marcia, oh, Marsha's coming off mute. Well, I, I just, um, I think it, we need to check in. As you've pointed out, the cons things go out to bid, they're way out of line from what has been bid in the past. So we've seen some major increases in, in construction costs. And if we don't have the budget to cover it, you have to go back to the drawing board or pull the project and, and redefine it. So that is the challenge about getting dates out there. Um, I, I appreciate what Anne is saying. Um, the Public Works Department does a really good job. Once they know, they do go door to door and tell people and they do accommodate businesses and they re work really, really hard to make sure the entrance is available during business hours. So um, sometimes it, it's a little more challenging with that, but they, they really wanna work with the business businesses, they recognize that um, when things are really important and, and keep people informed. So that's, that's part of the reason why it hasn't been um, discussed broadly yet. Um, and I know that they were continuing. Um, I asked that they add a couple of things that are being done uh, relative to the Bruce Ruin Rail Trail, and they've incorporated those into their, their bid documents. So um, we're, we're going to see how things proceed. And so it hasn't gone out to bid yet is what you're saying, Marsha? I don't know. I don't okay. know the status of it. And, and that's a question that I think Alan can answer very easily when yeah. you meet with him. Okay, great. Sounds like a great next step. Um, anything else on that front? Or should we move to our next item? We're over time, aren't we? So. I think we should move to the next item. <laughs> All right, um, member outreach. We wanted to talk about member outreach. Um, I did reach back out to those who had submitted green cards to us in the fall. Um, we had one person stop in. Um, there's a number another member of the public that I see on the screen. Um, if they are interested in the committee, there is um, a membership spot open. In fact, two at the moment. So we encourage folks to send in their green cards. Um, there also, my understanding is that the person who is um, managing intake of green cards at the town um, left that position. Um, so uh, Marsha's sense at our last meeting was that there was likely to be a delay um, with town meeting coming up and just the normal weirdness of the moment and mm -hmm. um, processing that. I don't know if there's any change on that front, um, but if we can be helpful in terms of, is there someone we should ping? Is um, there a ping person to be pinged on that front? There is no one yet. Um, as okay. you may be aware, uh, town manager Stephen Crane is, is no longer the town manager. Um, Carrie LeFleur mm -hmm. is our interim town manager. She was finance director. Um, they're going to be backfilling her department. So there'll be an interim finance director, an interim treasurer, collector, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my public health director retired in December. So I'm the acting public health director. Um, we are, we are, we are experiencing, That's an easy moment to take on that role. Huh? <laughs> right. Um, wow. So, um, and, and, and we are experiencing a surge in COVID. And so and not only is the public being impacted, but our town staff is being impacted. So operations, you know, we're, we're just trying to figure out what's going on <laughs> with town operations. So um, it, it was Jeremy Romanell. They, they did they are interviewing, they do anticipate filling the position fairly soon, and, and then that person will be available. Uh, currently, the town manager's office is, is actively getting ready for our special town meeting on January 20th. We have um, a, a pre-annual um, town meeting conference this Saturday morning. 
Um, everything is currently via Zoom. Town meeting cannot be via Zoom. People have to be in person to be able to vote. So we're trying to figure out how we do that with COVID on the rise. Um, it's it's just a, an incredibly oh challenging time all the way around. So that's wow. um, so forgive <laughs> me for not being fully present, but I'm just um, this is my well. I, I had hour to hour meetings today and I was at select board meeting Monday and uh, community preservation committee last night and tomorrow night's Bruce Freeman. So I'm just, I'm, I'm burnt out. <laughs> so. oh, Marcia. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Marcia. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being here. So, oh so that's what's going on. So if, you, if you're not getting response, contact Nancy or contact me. Um, and we can work, try to work something out if the town manager's office is unable to respond, you know, we'll, we'll find out what's going on and let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Clearly more pressing issues <laughs> than our green cards, but thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, other, on, um, other, other things we could do on, on membership outreach that are light lifts, like anyone want to put out a next door? post or something like that would that make sense yeah i can commit to doing that by the end of this week i will definitely do that i sort of signed up for it during our last meeting and have not done it because of the holidays but i'll do it by the end of this week um, and i think we'd also talked about making like flyers or something like that which i can easily do using the designs from you know a couple of years ago when we had an open house so why don't i do that as well thanks susan this week or next week, Susan? That is this week. <laughs> Send me a few flyers, Susan, through the mail. I will. Put them out and put them up at the mill and at, at um, bakery and stuff. Yep. A oh, Amy, and... at the beginning of that discussion, you mentioned something about reviewing green cards that I missed. In the notes. Do you remember what you said? reviewing green cards. Um, we, uh, we were sent a batch of green cards in the fall and I recontacted the people. One of our, one of my homework assignments from our last meeting was just to reach back out to people who had in the fall expressed an interest in um, committee membership. Got it. So I reached back out to them. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Um, and so I would say anyone who knows folks who think they think are a good fit for the committee or might be interested, give them a shout. Um, anything else on that front? I was just gonna say when the next door post gets done, I mean, I, I we have our little Hill Street happenings um you know email chain here which i'll also you know send it out and I encourage i'm sure all of us have something similar so um just uh but i, I want to be consistent in what we say so it, just probably copy the the uh the next door one not everybody uses next door so yep okay definitely if there's any way to if there's any way to target like um retirees, like people who have a lot of daytime business time hours um, available, unlike many of us that are here, um, that would have an easier time going to liaison to certain committees or meeting with town um, people who want to talk to us during the normal business hours that I think would be worth considering um, flyers going to, I don't know, like places where lots of retired people live, or there's a way to get the message out into like a community like that, that would be a good idea. That's a really, really good point. Um, are we able to canvas the uh, the various apartment complexes? <laughs> um, you know, there's it, it, there's bulletin boards or something. I don't know, Marcia, if you know, is there, an, you know, all the all these new apartments, a lot of them are senior housing, right? Or well, not, senior related. Not um they 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 attract maybe people who are seniors we we don't uh the only places that are senior designated senior over 55 are on forest ridge road so um other than that um in, i think you would want to read it out to property property managers yeah uh, before you posted something and and um i might be um 
if I don't have the information, I know Liz Rust, our RHSO director, does. So let me know what who you're interested in, and I can put you in contact with them. Great. You had also, I think, suggested that we get on the list the and the um, select boards meeting minutes, their list of committees oh, and right, right. members. Yes, yes. Can you remind us how we do that? Um, I would reach out to the town manager's office and, and it's town manager's office just to, to say um, you, you've um, on the select board agenda, you list boards and committees that need um, additional members. The West Concord Advisory Committee needs additional members. Can we be added to that list? Real simple. Okay. I, I attended the um, Cultural District Committee meeting yesterday and Susan Bates is the liaison to that one. She's on the select board. And I mentioned to them that we were looking for new members and she said, okay, I will put that in front of the select board or something, but it wouldn't hurt to like kind of double cover it, you know, to make sure that it goes onto their agenda. Right. I'll send a note. To, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um. And one other thought um, on signs, Hello. I don't, oh, I have another visitor. The visitor is back, this time in jammies. Um, <laughs> um, the, um, that great kiosk um, where we met for our um, walkabout on the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail at Main Street. Um, I don't know if you have to be officially sanctioned. Mommy. <laughs> Good night, Tony. Um, I don't know if you have to be officially sanctioned to put a flyer up there, um, but it's pretty visible. Lots of seniors and other folks I see walking there. I think you could put something, a poster up there, certainly. Okay. Might be worth. Um, we don't monitor that very, uh, very well. I go by periodically and take down things that are inappropriate, but I, just <laughs> <sometimes make> things. <laughs> I look at it all the time. I find out I'm like, yeah. oh, look, an ice cream social at Cousins yeah. Park. That sounds great. Um, yeah, I always see people looking at what's up there. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. So Amy Robinson, I think you walk by there a lot. If I was to send you a flyer, um, would you be able to like in the next couple of weeks when you're walking by, just like pin something up or does, would that be in your normal travels? It would be and I could, but the, I, I've done it once before and I like almost broke my thumb because it's like surprisingly hard to <laughs> shove a push pin into that. It's like really, really okay. dirty plywood. So I'll, I'll make sure I bring my like heavy duty. Yeah. <laughs> um, <thumbtacks. laughs> Excellent. Anything else on member outreach? Did we cover it? I think we covered it. All right. Um, liaison updates. Any liaison updates? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. The, the, the trails committee has not met since we last met, so I have no update. Um, the cultural yep. district committee is working on another informational kiosk that they're getting funding through Mass Cultural Council for, and they are in the process of like configuring that and figuring out what vendor might be able to produce it for them. But it would be kind of similar to the one that you see kind of where the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail starts across Main Street, across from Junction Park, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, and they wanted to be able to put like the West Concord Junction town map in there, and then also other like informational type stuff on the display board. So I thought that was exciting and um, they're getting geared up to hopefully acquire that. Where would it go or haven't they decided yet? It's not completely decided, but they were thinking near the commuter rail station um, so that when people get off the commuter rail, they could orient themselves. Yeah. That's a really good idea. That's yep, a great idea. idea. In other in other towns, a lot of cultural districts have that. Yeah, right. They have it a lot. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, thanks for that. Because one thing that seems to have dropped off too is we're not the cultural district signage. Because other cultural districts have signage too, you know. Um you know, and I, yeah, I, the district signs. I don't know where it went. <laughs> I think that um, Kate at the 
cultural district or yeah, cult West Congress hey. Junction Cultural District Committee meeting mentioned she might be working with Marsha on that a bit and making some headway. So um, I don't know exactly the status, but it sounds as if it's moving along. But that's what we should be collaborating with them on that because signage, the incoherent signage is one of the problems we face. People don't know where things are and, uh, and you know, they don't know it's a 20 mile per hour speed zone because of the way the signs are, it's a big issue. Yeah, I think it sounds like it's moving forward, at least this gateway signage sounds like it's making some progress, so. But we should, uh, we should stay connected about that. Definitely, yeah. Anything else on liaison updates? Nothing. So we are at our final agenda item, which is public comment. Any public comments? Seeing no public comment. Um, well, I wanted to say before we officially Disband. Thank you guys so much for um, just being wonderful, delightful people to get to know and work with. And I will miss you all. And it's been such a pleasure serving <laughs> on this committee over the past several years. And I'm going to miss it a lot. And I'm going to miss all of you. And when I am able to emerge from um, this moment in time, I, I'm excited to see what you guys are doing. And I'm excited to, um, to you know, dive back in on future initiatives. And I hope you'll look me up every so often if I can be of use on, um, on stuff you're working on. So thank you all, I'll miss you. We'll miss you, you've done so much. Thank you very much for all you've thank devoted you. to this committee. I mean, honestly, we've made so much progress with you as our leader. Oh, well, you guys have been amazing. I think like, I'm so excited about the design guideline preamble that you and Anne took on. I don't know. It's been a really fun committee to be part of, and I know you guys will continue doing great things. So thank you. Thank Make you. a motion to formally <laughs> thank Amy for yeah. her leadership. Vote it in, right? <laughs> <laughs> motion to adjourn. Seconded. I, I third it.